Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Babylon Iron show. It's myself and Sloth once again discussing what is a new signing for us. We have finally got ourselves a new centre back. We've needed one since the injury to Aguerd, to obviously the unknown as to what's going on with the injury around uh, Craig Dawson as well as Angelo Bonner. And so we've finally got ourselves a centre back. We've got uh, Tilo Kira from PSG. So a bit about the deal, you know, it's a 12 million pound euro deal, uh, plus bonuses. Initially, PSG wanted 20 million uh, euros, that is. We seem to have got this for a far lot less. <laughs> and he's also in a four-year deal with a two-year option. So it seems to be a bit of our <laughs> go-to deal at the moment, four years plus two. Um, so again, we've got a play there for, for the long term. Uh, nice to see you, Ethan. Thanks for joining as well. Um, and, you know, prior to obviously the deal getting agreed, there was quite a bit of outcry when the first bid went in for around £10 million. It doesn't look like as well that that was a, such a derisory offer in the first place now. So what's your first kind of thoughts on this, Loth? How do you feel about uh, this deal for, for Tilo? I'm, I, I'm really happy with it, to be honest. I think the price is great when we look at, I mean, it's rising to 16 million, isn't it? Yeah. And well, yeah. let's hope. He hits those clauses and he was actually a 16 million pound signing. But to be honest, I think in terms of a centre back as a whole, he's not he's not quite as tall as Diop, but he is a much better defender. And I'm one of the people who kind of was clutching onto the hope that Diop would develop into the player that we all thought he would, and particularly that that I saw in Ligue 1, but he just didn't. Whereas I think Kara has really he's really impressed me and if you know anything about PSG and their fans it's that generally if a fan if, if a player has one bad game the fans are on their back like yeah. I don't mean that in any disrespectful way to the club it's entirely the fans so you know if you want to come at me come well at me. let's face it they, they already jumped on Leo Messi at the start uh, they jumped on uh, Neymar as well Mbappe at some point will be, yeah, that's my bike game. Pass, if you guess what you heard, <laughs> Mbappe, I'm sure, will be another one. Um, but the comments that I care about the most are the comments that you see from Hansi Flick. And the biggest uh thing that he's done, which has in no words, is the fact that Tilo Kera is the player he's given the most international minutes to since he's been manager. So that in itself, uh, is all you need to need, know in terms of. Should you have confidence in him? You know, Hansi Flick has been a phenomenal manager in in Germany. He knows what he wants. He knows how to deal with players. And I think that's one of the biggest compliments you can have um, for Kira when you think of some of the talent there is in Germany. Um, and he's played the most minutes. So he's obviously a very vital cog in that uh, German wheel, um, which we know is obviously, <laughs> as always, it being Germany, it's incredibly efficient. <laughs> But um, I guess really what we most people want to know is, you know, what what is Kara going to bring to West Ham, and uh, what is what are the, what are his true positives to West Ham? Um, I think one thing he'll bring is he'll bring a bit of pace that we've lost from uh, from um, Aguerd into the back line. He's not as lightning quick as Aguerd, but he's still. He's still a very quick player. When he gets into his stride, he, he, he's, um, he's very quick. But um, just in terms of something that I think West Ham fans will really like about him is that he's really aggressive in terms of how he puts his body on the line. I don't mean that in a, in a stupid way like someone like Thomas Repka, but I mean he goes all out for something. And if he even if he's going for a header, which, you know, isn't his greatest attribute, he throws himself at it. And he will do the same with the challenge. He will do the same if he's going for a sprint. He will give 100%. Um, so I'm, I am I think fans will really like, especially because he he's one of those players who can really make space for himself. Um, we haven't really had too many defenders, apart from really 
of Bonner, who can make that side step and ping the ball out. Now, some of his diagonal passes aren't perfect, but he he makes the space for himself. And one of the things that I'm not too bothered about is that it's, it's the old cliche of when in doubt, put it out. He will go for the long ball. And if he doesn't get it, it's, it's generally gone out of play. So he's at least gained the team advantage going forward or just relieved a bit of pressure on us. So you've got a player who is quick, very strong, throws himself 100% at everything and is... He's got a lot more ability on the ball than we saw from the likes of Deal. So I'm really kind of, I'm actually really happy with this, particularly for the price we've got him at. Yeah, yeah and I think obviously the other advantage is he has played across the whole of the back throughout his youth to, <laughs> I said youth, to a professional career. But I think it's important that we caveat that point as well as the him playing defensive midfield, caveat that as to, those positions, particularly on the left side of the fence, as a left back and the CDM, um, were at youth level. So he's played, I believe, only about 11 games at most at left back in his professional career. Yeah. Uh, and central mid central defence midfield, I think it's about five. So whilst there is great flexibility in there because he is good with his feet, uh, he's very comfortable in possession, uh, he's comfortable passing, uh, taking it under pressure and all of those things, we do need to also kind of prefix slightly that with the fact that he is primarily a right-sided centre-back and a right-back. So despite a lot of kind of talk around him being a left-back, he's not really what you would say a natural. And even at right-back, he's not what you would call a natural right-back. He's very much defensive-minded. can get forward, but his crossing tends to be a little bit wayward, shall we say, at times. It's not his strong suit. But again, he is a very solid centre back, and even though he's six foot one, there we go. <laughs> even though he's only six foot one, he uh, will throw himself at everything, as you say. Um, he's maybe not the most dominant in the air, maybe not the strongest, but he is a good defender, uh, and will put himself on the line. And you know, we we kind of covered this before, but we'll just throw it up again. You know, when, when we talk around him and we talk about you know kind of what he can bring, you know he reason why his heat map is so much more on that right-hand side is obviously because he's played quite a bit of right-back as well. So he's got a bit of a blending there. And same same with some of his statistics. It's Maybe it doesn't look great from a defensive side if you would just look at those defensive stats. But it's always important to remember when you're looking at defensive stats is that they don't tell a whole picture because it doesn't take into account the nuances of the game, such as PSG are heavily possession-based. Therefore, are going to face a lot less defensive actions than other clubs. So he's going to have a lower kind of threshold potentially for, for those defensive duels. But other aspects, such as his passing, I think does actually kind of show the trend of where he is with PSG. And to the point of around his passing, maybe not always being the most expansive or creative. You can kind of take that with the number of key passes and so on that he, he manages to do within games. But overall, his passing is very solid. It's very secure. And it's what you'd come to suspect from a player who's coming from PSG. One of the things that I do like is, uh, as you said, he'll shift his body to kind of create a half space just for a pass, but he'll also do that to drive with the ball. And I think that's something with Black. We've not really had a defender confident and happy to take the ball and drive into space. Um, it can make a huge level difference if you've got a player who can then just go into midfield and create an overload. And this is exactly what he will do for us. He will drive into space. He's not also scared to take it under pressure in in our own defensive third and actually look to essentially try and take on the player. He may lose it, <laughs> so we have to be aware that he may actually lose the ball. But in most cases, he's because he's physically strong, because he has good feet, he is able to essentially take on the press of the forward and then go past that first line of defence on his own, which is something that's going to definitely help us. And I think, obviously, when you look at it as it is right now, we obviously he's going to come in to play, replace Reguerd, or at least take his place for the time being. 
what's going to be interesting is once Aguered comes back, obviously I think we will move to a three at the back from time to time. I don't think it's going to be our uh, primary formation, but I think we'll move to that that role. What I think is going to be interesting is the battle he will have with Zuma. Obviously, Zuma's been good at the start of the season, but he's now going to have some direct competition. So it's going to be interesting to see now how that pressure brings up uh, brings out of Zuma and whether we actually see Tilo kind of maybe take over when we go to a two at the back, maybe we go for a more agile, more confident possession centre-back pairing with Tilo and, and Kira. So Tilo and uh, Wed, or whether we actually go for maybe two players that are slightly different <laughs> in Zuma and Wed. But I want to get your view on when we when and if we move to a three, what, what he can bring in that kind of formation and what uh, kind of advantages that can bring for us, both in and out of possession. Um, well, I mentioned that kind of tenacious attitude. And I think in a three, that's the sort of thing that is really... Is it, it really helping your team push forward? It's not just helping you get out in the back, it's helping you win the ball back. And his attitude will really help you do that. Um, he's, as I mentioned, he's, he is very quick. Like, he's, he's not um, blistering in the same way that Aguirre is, but he is very quick. And having that athleticism next to someone like Aguerd or the or the opposite side with Zuma in the middle is so it is such a boost in comparison to someone like Dawson. And I don't mean that in any disrespect to Dawson. What I mean is that if your defender gets past Aguerd and they know I've got to stay in front of him, then having a player who is also very quick on the other side of the pitch who can come across is just another issue they have to deal with. It's 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 entirely different to having to beat the man, and then you've got space to run into that you know you can you can capitalize on, and you're not going to have a defender able to face you. Whereas if you've sent a grad, you know, into the Stratford shopping centre with a quick turn, you have got Kara who can come across and come and do that quickly. So I think it's going to allow us to be a lot more progressive with how we play, but also it's going to allow either of our centre-backs that bit more comfort going forward and also an anchor point because, you know, let's let's be honest, going forward isn't the best part of Zuma's game. And, and very rarely have we seen him really step out beyond set pieces. Now, having him as an anchor and someone who's just going to be able to sit back and pick out a pass is excellent. Having that option, and even if Ogbonna or Dawson come back into the fold, because we know that um, we know Zuma's knee is made of toast. So you know, if 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 either of them have to come back in, having that three, you've got that anchor point. You've got someone who can throw themselves at everything. And also knows they've got pace either side of them. They don't have to worry about um, necessarily getting skinned. They they can chuck themselves at something from a set piece, from a um, you know from a throw, and they can launch themselves at it. But what they've got is that cover behind them to to allow that. And I think it's a way that we're going to see a lot more attacking from the, from the centre-backs, but also a bit of a change of, of um, direction in how we play, which, for me, I think we can, we can really look to um, add a little bit more pace into the squad of the attack-wise, then it will, it will really make us a dangerous for a lot of sides. Yeah, I think um, you made a good point there, but <clears throat> being more progressive and being more aggressive is it's not just aggressive in just the physical aspects and the attack uh, the kind of attacking side, but it's also the setting a higher defensive line, which means you can press higher up the pitch to win the ball more in the opposition third rather than having to, to sit deep. Because obviously we've had to defend within our means as such and you know, again, 
it's not calling out Dawson. It's just the fact that he played a lot last year and he played in that right hand side where Kira is uh, most likely going to play. But again, it's that the pace that Dawson lacks, Kira is going to, to have. So he has the ability in which to allow us to step forward. If we play a three, we can obviously split those and have them quite, you know, our two left and right sides go quite wide if we need to as well to cover for the fullbacks. So again, the fullbacks can push forward. So it just means as a team we're far more entrenched in the opposition half and potentially third because we have a defence that allows us to go a bit dangerous and play on that kind of front foot and have that aggressive high line. And obviously if we do need to drop back, we can. But also if something does go over the top, we are going to have pace in which to get back and to drop. And I think that in itself is, is a good thing because, again, it moves our midfield further up. So it's always important to have something that uh, we can kind of do uh, out of possession, such as the high line. But it's also going to impact us massively going forward. And again, we've kind of mentioned it already. Aguerd is comfortable to board his feet. He doesn't necessarily need to beat a man because we, if you've watched any of him at Ren, his passing and his passing range is pretty phenomenal. So he would be able to kind of make those uh, range passing we have Kara, who's very good in those kind of short passing as well. Um, again, we have two players who are incredibly secure in the, in, uh, in possession. Zuma can kind of relax and just concentrate on just being the anchor point. He's just going to be essentially the conduit in which we shift the ball from left to right. That is essentially will be his function in a back three. But again, what I do like is the fact that out of possession, what it does mean is any one of those three can be aggressive and sprint out the defence to pressure. You know, something we tried against Arsenal last year with Zuma. I think we lacked the defensive understanding to make that work. I think we played a three in that game. We had Cresswell playing on the on the left uh, centre back position. He's got propensity to drift out wide. And I think if you have a three such as Kira, uh, Aguirre, and Zuma those kind of tactics can work because you can tell one of them that you're going to be the aggressor and the press and your your role is just to go out and try and stop. That's that's your role. And the rest are there then to mop up and kind of cover up the pieces, which I think once they're all fit, that's three incredibly good defenders. Now, I guess then the question becomes <laughs> as to do we stick with five centre-backs or does one go? Um, I think there are question marks on Bonner's uh fitness but he seems to be training yesterday sorry today um with the first team um so there is potential maybe that he's going to be kind of pushed to come in quickly we don't know <laughs> maybe maybe um and obviously also we never got a kind of a timeline on that injury either so i guess uh that's one of the questions that come with this signing but I think in total, I don't think there's really any negatives around it. You know, we've got ourselves a very good financial deal. At no point whatsoever have personal terms been a problem, <laughs> which I think many of us expected. Um, and the level he can bring to the team defensively and offensively is going to be, I think, a real good and big injection in the arm. Um, but I think, you know, we've covered quite a good piece on him today. Uh, we're going to keep this one a bit shorter, but... Any final thoughts, Love, on the sign of Tilo? Personally, I think it's a great deal for us, and quite looking forward to seeing him actually having a proper centre back alongside a centre back. No disrespect to Johnson, I think he's done well considering. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Tilo, and obviously that would be a great kind of stopgap, for a lack of a better term, until we can get Aguirre back in and then have a what I think is going to be Moyes' ideal defensive structure. I think, uh, again, for the price, it's a really, it, it's a really great signing. He, he is not the kind of player that you would have thought would is available for that price point. Uh, whether that's just because of his international perhaps like normally even then you would say, you know, that's a 25, 30 million pound player. Even when we were linked to Tar last uh, season, people were still I think saying... it's also his last year though, isn't it? So we should probably caveat... But yeah, kind of value with that as well. But you're still talking about a player taking a step down from PSG, come to work, and that 
that's the kind of thing that you know you mentioned we haven't heard any issue about um personal terms that says a lot and uh, i kind of got a bit of uh, heat from some wolves fans the other night uh, for my comment on nunez like going to them over us which wasn't yep. it wasn't in any way meant as a disrespect more just a comment on the 180 but mm-hmm. i think it's a real statement about where we are that we're trying we're, that we're able to um get these players, get the calibre of players that we are. I think a big benefit as well is that it will allow us to move Johnson to the back as well. Because I I like Carroll a lot, but again, as we mentioned earlier, he's not a left back. He's not left back cover. It's like um it would be like me saying, Oh well in five a side I've covered I've covered the goalkeeper spot a couple of times. It's 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 not He's not played there and got a proper understanding of the position. It's something you can do, but it's not to your skill, your main skill set. It would be like, um, but what's the Ajax Academy where they learn to play in every position? Yeah. And if you suddenly had to play him at left back, then he, he would give his best. That's the kind of player he is. He'd give a hundred percent. But for me, I'd I'd put Johnson there. We saw against Leon, he can do it for us. Um, he knows the team and he knows what we need. So I think he gives us a lot of options and, and versatility, but also quality. And as we mentioned, with players coming back, this is the kind of deal that is going to help us keep a, a, a certain standard in the defence. And yeah, being million, I, I haven't got what to say really. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that's a good place to end. We've got ourselves uh, our new German centre back, right back. However, you want to play him, he can play in that defence. Um, but we've got ourselves a new new centre back for the next six years, uh, basically, um, of high quality, who's keen to impress going into a World Cup year, well, a World Cup in six months, in fact. Um, so. It's fantastic that we've got a player that is going to be coming in eager to impress and to show Hansi Flick he should continue to make him his most cat or most <laughs> minutes player uh, for, for Germany as well. But um, on that note, we're looking forward to seeing him. Hopefully we'll see him tomorrow. If not, I would imagine we'll see him this weekend turning out in the Claret and Blue. So, one left thing to do, Sloth. Come on, you Irons. <laughs>